Now let us proceed with the next subtopic on our chapter, which is 5.2 on scalar product. Now let us proceed to the next example, example 3. So determine, determine which pair of the vectors are parallel. So what we need to do is, um, if it is parallel, meaning that, uh, remember, we have this condition. Okay, so let's look at the question first. Question A and question B. Now, so if it is parallel, we understand that. Uh, okay, let us look at question A. So we are given. Alright, for question A, we are given I minus J minus K. Okay, and then you also have to check the second vector is negative I plus J plus k that is for b right so from the properties vector a is parallel to b if we have that a is equals to lambda of b okay so it is parallel if we have a equals to lambda of b so we compare vectors that we have over here so i minus j minus k okay these vectors is equals to actually if we can factorize negative one so if we factor out negative one we have i minus j minus k right so from the second vector we factorize out then we have it in this form so we understand that vector a is equals to negative 1 times vector b so lambda over here is equals to negative 1 so therefore we can say that vector a and also vector b and vector b are parallel vectors all right so this is the conclusion Right, that is for question A. Now, let us look at question B. So, question B, let A, this is given by our question, A and B, right? So, if A is parallel to B, it is going to be same definition like just now. A equals to lambda B. Okay, so if we compare, okay, so now we are trying to do by comparing the components. So compare the components of vectors. Okay. Uh components i, g and k for each vector that we have. So let's compare the first component for x is i. Okay, for component i, we have that for a we have 3i, right? So for b we also have 3i, right? So over here we can see that the lambda may be equals to 1. Okay, so now let's look at the second component, component J. And for component J, we have for vector A, that is negative 2J. For B, we have positive 2J. Right, so we can see that over here, this is equals to, lambda is equals to negative 1. It is not directly equal. Right, so by checking two components, we can already see that this value for lambda is not equal. So we can make a conclusion that lambda is not unique. Okay, so when we say unique, meaning that it does not have the same value for each component. So we can make a conclusion that a is not equals to okay, a is not equals to uh, lambda b. Okay, so if it is not equals, therefore, A is not parallel to vector B. Okay, so this is our conclusion for this one. Or, we also have an alternative method for this question. So, we can check that A is parallel. A is parallel to B, to vector B, if, okay, we can see that 
A dot B is equal to plus minus. So this one is by using the properties also. Is equal to uh, magnitude A times magnitude B. Right, so now if we check by using these properties instead, so what we're gonna have is magnitude A, sorry, vector A dot vector B is equals to, we're gonna have 3 times 3 plus with negative 2 times 2 plus with 1 times negative 1. The value is equals to 4. Okay, and then we check our magnitude of A. So, magnitude of A is equals to 9 plus 4 plus 1. Square root of this. That is equals to square root of 14. Magnitude of B, on the other hand, is equals to 9 plus 4 plus 1. Okay, and then square root. So, also equals to 14. Therefore, if we check for the magnitude A times magnitude B, that is just equal to 14, right? So, square root 14 times square root 14, that is equal to 14. So, we can see that vector A dot vector B is not equal to the magnitude of A times magnitude of B, right? Because this one, the value is 4, this one, the value is 14. So, therefore, we can say that A is not parallel to vector B. Okay, so that is our final answer.